Another poem I'd like you to analyze is Hedwig Aruzu's Rhyme in Time. We can do this by asking a few questions about the poem, such as, how do you analyze the poem? Or what do you look for in analyzing the poem? I won't be giving you the complete answers to these questions so that you'd be able to arrive at your own interpretations of the poem. Although we'll still be looking at the technicalities of the poem, we'll be looking more at the content of Aruzu's poem when compared to the technical analysis of the stanza in Leong's poem in the previous clip. We can begin with her interest in rhyming in the poem. The rhyming patterns resemble those that could be found in nursery rhymes and children's songs. What is the reason for this? Does it result in childishness? But what's wrong with nursery rhymes and children's songs? Does the childishness refer to the infantile state of Singapore culture? Or, considering that we are still under British rule within the time frame of the poem, to our nascent, even premature, search for a national identity? Perhaps we can invoke the suggested concept of a rhyming archive here, where certain rhymes invoke connections to other rhymes or poems. We also have the concept of intertextuality here, where some words or phrases in a literary work refer to other literary works or words and phrases from them. T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland is a poem that can be used as a reference point for Aruzu's poem. Aruzu's poem, in fact, begins with the line, Fragments of a Wasteland. The Wasteland makes numerous references to texts in several languages. To appreciate Eliot's poem, Knowledge of all the references is not absolutely necessary, but they do help us to understand the poem better. In this respect, Aruzu's poem is quite similar to Eliot's poem, except that there are fewer intertextual references and the texts referred to are more accessible, less culturally diverse and less linguistically challenging than some of Eliot's references. Metrical and rhyme schemes are quite relevant for Aruzu's poem, even if they do not run throughout, as in Leong's poem. There are several rhyming or metrical patterns that are of interest in this poem, but I would like to focus on the last four lines of rhyme in time here. My question is, what do the relatively regular rhyming and metrical schemes in the last four lines do to the poem? Do they imbue the poem with a sense of finality? This is for you to think about and to arrive at your own interpretation. Let us scan the lines. And now, from western windows only, a pale uncertain light is shed. Merdeka's chant comes faint and slowly. But eastward, look, the stars flame red. Except for the extra syllable at the end of the first and third lines. The metrical and rhyme schemes are fairly regular. So what does this regularity in the last four lines do to the poem? Do they imbue the poem with a sense of finality? This is for you to think about and to arrive at your own interpretation. Of course, the sense of finality cannot be judged 
by looking at the lines in relation to the sound patterns by themselves. If we look at the first two lines, the wonderfully ambiguous phrase, Western Windows, refers to both the sunset and the Western colonial powers, the British in this case, who are facing their uncertain imperial sunset. This is contrasted with what is happening in the East, with the struggle for independence indicated by the Malay word Merdeka, and the rise of communism indicated by the stars that are flaming red. The word red here, punctuated by the rhyme, is supplanting what is being shed by British imperialism. Thank you.